Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I... I'm just checking on you. Just checking in on you. I'm officially out of ways to say that. There's a hole in there's a hole in the wall in this fucking room. These guys fixed the pipes because there was galvanized piping in here, and uh, I never got this hole fixed. Just fucking realized that. That's how fucked up my house is. You know what I realized? I talk about my house so much that there's somebody sitting there going like, eventually he's going to run out of money, probably right when the house is 98% fixed, and I'm going to swoop in and buy it. And he's gone in and redone everything. Redid everything. Um, speaking of which, I got the epoxy floor put in on my gym. I went downstairs to look at it. I was like, oh boy, oh boy. Would you look at that floor you can eat off of? Oh boy, oh boy. And I went in there, boom, 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 boom. It was bubbles. So they got to add another layer because, you know, my floor is not level. They had all this fucking shit. We've got to float the floor. That's going to cost you all this money. Maybe we just fill in the cracks. Another grand out the window. See ya. I don't even care anymore. I just laugh now. When contractors come up to me, I, what, what, do you, what do you want? What do you want? It's like that old Robin Williams story that if you just walked up to him at some point, you said, hey, man, uh, Robin, I'm a comedian. He would just write you a check for 100 bucks. <laughs> hey, sorry. Sorry if I riffed on some of your shit. My apologies. This is what I do now when contractors show up. Yeah, what, yeah I know. Whoa. How much this time? Can I just go into my pocket or do I need the checkbook? Do I got to write numbers on a piece of paper? It just never ends. It never ends. And meanwhile... Meanwhile, as I wait for the gym to be made, I am sitting in the writer's room uh, doing efforts for family, and two things have happened. I'm, I'm putting on writer's room weight. My gym isn't fucking made, and, uh, you know, I'm fucking, uh, I, I feel like the last, I don't know if I'm talking to you guys about my, my fucking left leg, my hamstrings, like, tightened up. You know, you ever see the guy run down the first baseline, and all of a sudden, hey, hey, he starts fucking hopping, or that guy in the Celtics in game one. You're running up the court and he just fucking collapses. I was like, oh, did I, did I literally pull a hamstring doing stand up? Cause God knows I, I haven't been working out. And, um, and you know what? I ended up figuring it out. What it was is, uh, it's from sitting down in the fucking writer's room. Like, I guess sitting is not healthy. It's one of the most unhealthy things you could do. I guess your body's not designed the way that we sit. The way that we've made chairs, just plop your ass down. Whatever it is, blood flow, I don't know what the fuck it is. So old fucking uh, Billy Butt Cheeks here. Now I got a problem with my fucking sciatic nerve on my left side. So I literally had to have my lovely wife buy one of those foam rollers, right? <laughs> this is how old I am. This is from sitting. All right, and you, you literally, I looked up some lady on the fucking internet who had, like, I looked up the proper way to do it before I did it because I know that you can fuck your body up. Like, people get these things, and they just start rolling around on them. And I immediately learned, first thing, you don't want to roll over joints. There's all this shit, and there's all this proper form. So I went through about two or three videos till I got to somebody who all the comments were like, oh, my God, your form's perfect and all that. So I was, I was watching this woman. So basically what I do is I sit down on the thing, and then cross my legs, as she says, cowboy style, not lady like cowboy style, which is basically like if I was wearing a skirt, my balls would be hanging out. Right. <laughs> Sorry for the visual. Um, you sit like that and then you sort of put your weight on one side and you and I got to tell you, dude, the fucking pain that I was in. It isn't like a. Uh, it, it isn't like a like a severe pain. It was like the, if you had an older brother and you know when he would be fucking with you and he, I'd sort of start twisting your arm. He'd be like, ah, 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 like that, that type of a fucking pain. And um, I got to tell you, the, the foam roller is a goddamn game changer. But if I didn't have to go and but the thing is, I kind of work it out and it's fine. Hey, work it out, you know, but then I go and I, I'm in a writer's room all day. So I keep trying to stand up and that type of shit. And I'm, I'm feeling like it's two steps forward and one step back, but I'm at least moving in the right direction. So I just putting that out there. If you do um, have any of those types of problems, uh, get one of those. This has been working for me, I should say. 
I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, but this has been working for me. And if you're young, uh, I would start doing yoga as soon as you can. It's um, I'm telling you, I, I've known this forever, but I, I just get bored with shit. I'll do yoga and be like, I'm just going to do yoga like every fucking day. And then it's just, I just get burned out. And then I'm like, you know what? Fuck yoga. You know, I get mad at yoga rather than myself for being totally fucking obsessed with shit for like 10 days until I just, you know, I did that with Chipotle a long time ago when I lived in New York City. You know, if you ever moved to New York City, which I hope you do, everybody should try and fucking live there. It's great, you know, until you get into your 30s. And it's like, oh, am I going to be one of those cat people? I got to get out of here, right? I want some space, you know. Um, but when you live there, you know, you start ordering out. This is how it works. You move there. You're fucking terrified. Like, how the fuck am I going to afford to live here? And you fucking eat spaghetti every fucking night, right? And then you start making a little more money. And every once in a while, you take a cab. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm taking a cab. This is fucking amazing. And then you get back to your apartment and you have all this guilt because you blew all that money. And you could have just spent, you know, whatever the fuck it was back in the day. It was like $1.25 to take the subway. Yeah, I know. That's how old I am. Um and then you start making a little more money, and then all of a sudden you start ordering out, right? You start ordering out. You start to get to know all the restaurants and all that type of shit. And then once you have the money to order out, what immediately happens is it's just a radius within which that they'll deliver, and you burn out every fucking restaurant around you. And then you become – then you're officially a New Yorker when you're living in Manhattan and you're bitching that there's no good restaurants in your neighborhood. Um, there's no good Italian. You can't get good Italian. I don't. I, why, I mean, there's so many people here. If you, the foot traffic alone, why don't they put in a, an Italian fucking restaurant? You start flipping out. Like whatever your favorite food is, you're bitching that it's not there. Um, so whatever. So this Chipotle ends up opening up after I tried every fucking restaurant 15 times in my little fucking three block radius, and I went to that fucking thing. Like I swear to God, I went there like I don't know, maybe 11 days in a month. I, and I'll never forget how I felt that last time. I felt like I was at the end of like a food eating contest where you were just telling your jaw to keep moving up and down where the rest of your body was like, uh, can we just uh, puke now? And um, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've been there since. Chipotle and Thai food. It was a Thai food restaurant down the street. And I remember I ordered it and it was delicious. And then it sat in my fridge for two, three days. And I said, hey, you know what I think I do? I'll do. I'm going to eat that three day old Thai food. See how that does. And I got food poisoning. And um, rather than being the mature person and taking the responsibility on my end, I blamed Thai food. I was like, fuck Thai food. I'm never eating Thai food again. I didn't eat that for like 10 years. And then, uh, you know, eventually we came back. We were uh, we were able to smooth things over, you know, like Guns N' Roses. You know what I mean? It was the exact same thing, exact same trajectory I had with Thai food. Um, band members in Guns N' Roses had with Axl Rose, and now they're all back together. And evidently, the fucking shows have been great. Um, they played Mexico City the other night, and uh, I would have loved to have gone down to that, gone to that show, had a great time, then get kidnapped. You know, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> Mexico City scares the shit out of me. Any Mexico people, Mexicans, uh, real ones, real ones. I don't mean the ones here in L.A. I mean the real fucking deal. You're in Mexico. You know what I mean? Like I'm German Irish, but I don't live in Deutschland or fucking the, the Emerald Isle. You know what I mean? I lived in Massachusetts. I, I went to Friendly's. You know, I'm not a kraut, right? So let me let, let me ask you this, because it's right there. It's fucking a quick plane ride away. There's all these beautiful places to go, and then there's all these other fucked up places to go. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. Um, and, uh, you know, all they show about you guys is the fucking drug cartels peeling people's faces back. And, all. and I know there's no fucking way all of Mexico, everybody's just walking around peeling off each other's faces. I know there's no fucking way that that's happening. I know there's it's like here. I bet people outside of this country think everybody walks down the street with a fucking gun on their hip. You know, when they don't have money for a toll, they shoot the guy in the toll booth and then some stagecoach comes in. I don't know what the fuck they think. Right. Or they think we're in and, and we're all 300 pounds and we're on fucking meth. Right. We don't know where England is. All that shit. I like that snobby European shit where they just think they're so fucking cultured. 
You know what I mean? With their little ass fucking countries over there. That's driving. When I go over to fucking Europe, I love when they say shit like that. You know, you guys don't know about the fucking world. It's like, neither do you. You don't know what the fuck's going on over in Asia. You know what's going on right in your little fucking area. But your little area, for me, would just be the East Coast. But for you, it's like 15 different fucking countries. Belgium and fucking Luxembourg. I mean, you can walk through those two countries. You can sleepwalk through those two countries from fucking Amsterdam and end up in France and be like, what? what happened? Oh, shit, I got to go to work. And then jog back. Um, having said that, I'd love to go to both places. <laughs> oh, the big phony covering his fucking tracks. I was going to go to your show in Belgium, but after you talked about how small we were, now I'm not going. Um, controversy on social media today when one person in Belgium took offense. Um, so anyways, they're redoing the fucking floors again. So I end up getting bubbles. B is for bubbles. Remember that? Sesame Street. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. It pays for brother who bought you some. And there was that fucking guy with the puberty voice harmonizing. I think he was supposed to sound like a Beach Boy type thing, but it didn't. It was just fucking, it used to make me like angry when I was a kid. See if I can find that for you guys, and I'll start playing it. Um, so anyways, as always, I never let myself get too out of shape, and I need to drop about 10 pounds. So, um, oh, fucking uh, freckles here, despite the fact uh, the gym isn't made yet, and I got to go to work every day. I'm going to try to lose two pounds a week. I'm back up to 180, everybody, and uh, I've been eating well the last couple of days. And always the first couple of days, the fact that if you just eat well, you drop a couple. So I got on the scale yesterday, it said 177. So I must have ate like a fucking tub of shit the night before when I got on at 180. So I'm about 178. So I'm just going to go back down to 168. Um, be right around the time for my birthday. And, uh, you know, two pounds, that's easy, right? A couple of push-ups, you know what I mean? I'll go on my stupid foam roller. Oh, my God. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm so fucking old. I think I have to bring it to work. How fucking hilarious is that? I'm going to walk in with that thing at work, and, and I'm going to walk in to a room full of comedy writers. Do you, you understand the pounding that I'm going to fucking take? I'm gonna get tr oh, that's going to actually fuck up our work for today because they're going to spend the first two hours trashing me. Um, and what am I going to do other than fucking take it? That's it. There's nothing I can fucking do.